Hi everyone, thank you all very much for being here today. Let me introduce myself. I'm Malu, I'm one of the creative directors in Geometry Buenos Aires. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank this invitation to be part of this creative week. I know that it's a very special year in a very unusual context and maybe most of us are at home like me. In my case, it's my 90th something quarantine day and it's very hard, it seems taken from a science fiction movie, but we have to continue and that's why I will do my best to make you have a good time. So today I'd like to talk about the most beautiful ugly brief and maybe are you asking why? And I could be here and show you the most creative arts of the world to, to motivate you and maybe it works for some of you but uh, I think that many of you, after this talk, uh, could think that creative world is nothing to do with my, with my job or with my daily work or with me. And that is exactly what I don't want to happen. So let's start. Well, from the beginning in advertising, we dream about working on the perfect brief. And in this kind of perfect brief wish list, we can find a, a brand that everybody loves, a generous budget, all the time you need to work on, or a client that loves risky ideas, or it tends to work with a Hollywood filmmaker or a very good filmmaker. And all we know that kind of that kind of brief doesn't exist. And just a few uh, will have good luck once or twice in their career, but others, like me, were born in Argentina. And, um, well, let me tell you something. We're born in my country is a real adventure and sometimes an extra obstacle. Why? Well, because Argentinians are well known all over the world because of tango, Maradona, Messi, Pope Francis, but of course because of our eternal economic crisis loops. And that's why this is us trying to get a good brief in our context. That's why falling into frustration is too easy. But guess what? Frustration and creativity are born together. And to focus on this point, let me tell you that there is no creativity without frustration. So now I'd like to share with you a short story. It was 1919, Kansas City, and a young cartoonist was fired by a local newspaper. And his editor said that he had neither imagination nor good idea. He failed roundly four times before having her first success and well but he never gave up and he's not the only one who began his the see his creative career from a failure and there are some unique artists who were born from a big no and maybe you know some of these stories but well for example the Beatles that they were rejected many times before having their first opportunity to record songs and when he finally made it, um, well, they received a recall from this studio, Deca Studios, that, saying that they didn't like it, their music, and that guitar music is, was, one, was on the way out. The same with Lady Gaga. When she submitted her demos to, to her first boss, he, he said that her music was disgusting and, more, and not marketable. It sounds really crazy, uh, this, but, well, it, it's the, the failure story about Lady Gaga. In other uh, creative industry, uh, happened the same. For example, Stephen King, at the beginning, some editor said that his stories were very dark and nobody would want to read it. And well, the same with J.K. Rowling. She has a, a very sad, a very sad story because um, she lost her job and her marriage and nobody wanted to read 
uh, her first book. But well, when she finally found an editor who, who read the book and, and his daughter did it, um, well, she finally started uh, her career. And well, here um, the same editor said that she should get a job because she wouldn't make any money writing children books. Thank of God we know the end of all these stories and we know that all of them are amazing artists that everybody loves but here it's interesting that the critics that they receive at the beginning um, in some way empowers their creativity and their style and that's why the real question here is would they have been the same artists without their first no? Um, well, here for me the answer is that failure is the first engine to push us up to be better. Um, now I'd like to, to share with you um, a part of a, a TED talk, uh, a Tim Hartford TED talk. Uh, Tim is an economist and a journalist and he gave an, an amazing uh, talk about how creativity can be born from the most uncertain places. And well, he mentioned different kinds of experiments ranging from the cognitive psychology to examples that came from uh, the musician's world and well, now I will share with you just a part of this uh, talk and then we, we, we will talk about that. I want to talk about somebody from the background of the world of rock and roll. And you may know him, he's actually a Tedster. His name is Brian Eno. He is an ambient composer, rather brilliant. He's also a kind of catalyst behind some of the great rock and roll albums of the last 40 years. So he's worked with David Bowie on Heroes. He worked with U2. And what does he do to make these great rock bands better? Well, he makes a mess. He disrupts their creative processes. And one of the ways in which he creates this disruption is through this uh, remarkable deck of cards. I have my signed copy here. Thank you, Brian. They're called the Oblique Strategies. He developed them with a friend of his. And when they're stuck in the studio, Brian Eno will reach for one of the cards. He'll, he'll draw one at random, and um, he'll make the band follow the instructions on the card. So this one, ah, change instrument roles. Yeah, everyone swap instruments. Drummer on the piano. Brilliant, brilliant idea. Look closely at the most embarrassing details. Amplify them. Make a sudden, destructive, unpredictable action. Incorporate. <laughs> These cards are disruptive. Now, they've proved their worth in album after album. The musicians hate them. <laughs> so uh, Phil Collins was playing drums on an early Brian Eno album. He got so frustrated, he started throwing beer cans across the studio. Um, Carlos Alomar, great rock guitarist, working with Eno on David Bowie's Lodger album. And at one point, he turns to Brian and says, Brian, this experiment is stupid. But the thing is, it was a pretty good album, but also, Carlos Alomar, 35 years later, now uses the oblique strategies. And he tells his students to use the oblique strategies because he's realized something. Just because you don't like it, doesn't mean it isn't helping you. This guy talked about how um, these musicians were more creative when they found um, an obstacle or when they felt uncomfortable during the creative process. And here it's very interesting because I think that it's interesting for us and our daily work because all the time we are facing obstacles and uh, different kind or unpredictable um, 
things that appears when we were working in, when we are in the middle of the, this creative process. That's why I think that frustration empowers creativity. And uh, in any creative industry as well as ours. And now I like to move on my daily work and I like to share with you a creative brief story. What I want to share with you is my best ugly brief. And I say that it's my best because I had a lot of ugly brief during my career, um, but this one was the best. And it was generate a summer activation for Volkswagen Amarok in the beach. And it doesn't sound uh, very interesting, and it wasn't. Um, the brief was becoming better and better, war after war, and I like to say that we had like an unwanted list of uh, in this brief. For example, uh, we had almost zero budget. It was our third year receiving exactly the same brief. A client who wanted to show how cool his brand looked in summer. And we had to show branding, branding, branding that in other words, in that context means sun umbrellas and branding cups. And well, we felt like this. And yes, I know that you know what I am talking about because this feeling is very common during our creative uh, process or our creative days. And um, well, here the, the, the most important is how do you answer to this kind of frustrating brief? And um, this one was our answer. Summer arrives and all the people go to the beach And behind them the brands, especially those of cars Fighting to get their attention by doing the same things Until now, Volkswagen presents to show our pro it's the sand and never and never forty kilometers of sand and one hundred thousand printed logos per day an experience of two months and now we What do you think? Would it have been the same work without all these restrictions? Or, more precisely, have these limitations shaped this job? Well, I think that it's more the second one. And I think that these limitations shape this project. Now I'd like to share with you the creative process and the way to produce this, this idea with almost a zero budget. So let me tell you the story. We had two wheels, literally. We put this project on our shoulders, literally. We didn't have any backup. We only had an Amarok, an Amarok. Uh, we were 
three graves, uh, we had two cameras and two cameramen. And we made some tests uh, weeks before, but we didn't have any chance to fail. So I remember arriving on the beach in the middle of the night before the sunrise. Um, we were very nervous. Um, you have to picture us when we saw that special Amaro going into the beach and printing on the sand. And I remember my, my boss face, uh, Tony Wiseman, and my adventure partner because it was really an adventure. And he was very happy. And when we look, look, when we look each other, we felt relief and we were so exciting that everything was working as we had planned. And well, I treasured that moment like an incentive to keep fighting every idea. And well, this, this activation was running two months. And one year after, a very well-known bank did exactly the same. And at the beginning, I felt angry, but then I realized that we had invented a new summer media. And uh, well, that's why I feel better, but that's why I think that this is an iconic work. But let me back to the, to the, to the moment that we were filming because at that moment it wasn't enough for us and um, we were having dinner after this long filming day when we were talking about how to do to transmit this summer mood to uh, video content and at that moment we thought that it had to sound like like beach voice because summer sound like beach voice and that was the moment when we came up with this crazy idea to narrate the video case with a summer song. And it sounded pretty good in our heads, but the challenge here was to find a musician who understand our expectations. And we found it and he made a hit, a real hit. It was so catchy that it was impossible not to hum it and we sang this summer song for months at the agency. So we were very, very happy with this, with this work, but well, what about the client? Well, we all know that sometimes with a, when, when a creative team is happy with a, with a project, uh, the client isn't. But in this case, it was a win-win idea. But let me tell you the story with this with this client. We started our relationship with this uh, Amarok brand manager two years before and he came from sales and he was very conservative and at the beginning he only approved a, a, a adaptation from abroad. So <laughs> presentation after presentation we start to manage to change his, to change his mindset and uh, little by little, um, we never stop presenting challenging ideas, disruptive ideas. And I think that, well, this one was one of many that we present, but well, uh, everybody was happy with this, with this idea. But the most important for me is that this project work as a bridge to the next that demanded more courage to be approved. And it's important for me to uh, share with you this because we had like, a process to, uh, in, this, uh, in, in, in the way that this client approved us ideas. So uh, let me show you the following work that we called uh, Loaded Comments.
yo soy usuario de eh, Vinimos a conocer un poco los límites que tiene la Amarok. Mucho comentario malo. Otras camionetas con motores más potentes. Está armada con, los, con, los, con las roditas para que no se vuelque. Bueno, Mejor amigo tiene una la cabina simple 2012 que pobrecita da lástima. Sí, sí. Cada uno elige su camino, ¿qué quiero? Carga, realmente carga. Ese es mi comentario. No te arrastra ni un bonsai. Bueno, vamos a ver si lo arrastra. La amargo va a pasar un charco. Ya que es una chata de paseo, lo vamos a invitar al amigo a dar una vuelta a pasear la tolva. Es totalmente distinto a lo que estoy acostumbrado. Y ahora entramos en duda. Son los comentarios, ¿eh? Esta torta no se la bancó ni un poquito, ¿eh? Qué hermosa tortazo. Eh. Well, this is not a can lion idea, but it's a very nice daily idea. Uh, we were, we won uh, a very important award here for this idea, but uh, the the thing is, it was an idea that mean accepting product critics of any kind and I'm very proud to say that I, that I saw it shared by the most important uh, Volkswagen Argentina directors on LinkedIn. So that is an extra award for me and we have been fighting for this idea since 2016 but, and we made it in 2019. So, well, let me tell you that it doesn't matter if you have to face a small or a big brief, if it is boring or without budget, each brief can be the brief. And, well, talking about perseverance <laughs> to wait three years to produce an idea, I think that there is something in our Latin DNA that encouraging us not to give up and try to find a way out. We are stubborn and we feel a big passion for what we do that push us to do things. And do is some kind of philosophy here in Argentina to don't let die ideas in, in your nose. And uh, well, I always like to say that creativity has to run in your veins every day and if you don't get this feeling this job is not for you because be part of um, of my creative team mean a lot of work a lot of sacrifice and manage a uh, frustration every day and when you got it you spread this feeling and it reaps good results uh, a few days ago um, we won uh, a new account in the agency and when we had our first meeting, meeting with this new client he, they said that they one of the reasons that explained why we were the chosen ones uh, was that we felt our passion and our point to win it our guts and our commitment and at the same time, other clients the same day said that they really appreciated the, our perseverance to go again and again with proactive ideas. And no matter how many times they can't uh, produce them. And that, wa that was a very nice day for me just to desmitify that creative teams only cares about awards. The following slide 
Uh, for me, it's the most important and it's my favorite because it represents all our huge effort. Um, this is just a part of uh, our last year and a half and I'm very, very proud of every single work that you can see here because it was a huge, a huge effort to um, produce them but we made it and we can see more more ideas on this board unless in our in our notes and the thing that makes me feel really really proud about all this work that they are a hundred percent real work were um, works that came from from very complicated brief but we we made uh, an interesting work here and um, take a look we can find here uh, Cannes Lions winners like this uh, print uh, the ups and downs print for Volkswagen trucks or this my, my favorite piece here uh, robot uh, that, uh, this, this story of this robot that we made for a cinematic Hoyts and um, well I love all this work because I love my, my work um, and my teamwork, of course, <laughs> because it's a, a huge effort of uh, all the agency. So, talking about happiness, uh, let me show you uh, our awards and what it happened when you work your daily work with passion. I am a believer of, of a real work. Um, I think that working every day full of energy and giving value to the little brief is the way that an agency can make the difference. And um, I'm very proud to say that all this award that we won, we made it with 100% real work. And before saying goodbye, right now, maybe it's possible that you are receiving a brief that make you feel uncomfortable, bored, limited by resources, or if you feel pressured by deadlines, or it is the same day in brief of every year, or the 15 presentation you make, well, maybe what you feel about that brief is the best kick to come up with a great idea. So thank you all very much for being here. Let's face more failures, and get more creative.